Hi, this is Rick. Welcome back. This is a demo of the new Rust Group Halo system. The aim of the system is to add more immersion into the process of halo jumping and missions that you make. Rather than just spawning players in the air with a parachute on their back, the system places you and your group into a mobile C-130. The C-130 is essentially a movable aerial insertion point. Uh, there are a lot of additional configurable features which I'll go into in a few minutes. The, the Rust Group Halo system has been tested in single player, multiplayer on both listen and dedicated servers. How you set this up, you, you copy the Group Halo folder to your mission folder. You add a C-130 from Capcom mod, name it, name it C-130, uh, stick it at a, a suitable altitude, which would be about, say, 1,000 meters. Add these two add actions to the laptop or whatever suitable object you want to use. Then uh, you add another line into the C-130, which basically handles the lights and the engine uh, sounds and so on. Then all you do is you, you add the sound classes to the CFG sounds in your description.ext. The, the demo has got a description.ext that you can literally just copy if you don't have a description.ext in your mission, or just copy the CFG sounds section and either merge it if you have that class definition in your description.ext, or just take the sound classes and copy them across to your CFG sounds. So the options that we have are leave a ramp open. You may want to, for successive jumps, you don't want to have to wait for the, the ramp to open every single time. Uh, you can change the default parachute class. You can choose to have a backpack on your chest. You can also decide where everyone will manually open their chute because they're professional, they know what they're doing. Uh, or you, you can set it to auto-deploy. If you set it to auto-deploy by setting manual shoot to false, um, then the auto-deploy will send a message uh, as soon as you jump out the plane. It'll tell you that the shoot will automatically deploy at a certain altitude. So you won't uh, kind of worry about um, plummeting into the ground and becoming a lawn dart. If the auto open shoot is selected, you can select the deploy altitude for the shoot. If it's uh, anything much less than 150 or 120, I should say, which is the minimum, it will then default back to one, uh, 150. If you want to en enable the smoke, then you go into the uh, Ross Paris smoke.sqf and just modify whatever color smoke you want. Then you can change the view distance. If you set the view distance, change view distance to true, then you can adjust the view distance, overall view distance. At maximum I've said is 10,000 and object view distance for objects would be 2.5. These things impact your FPS a lot. So just be warned. If you do set these things really high you, and you suddenly notice your f frames have like halved, and that'll be the, the that'll be the issue. The multiplayer server or on a dedicated server, most servers will actually limit these two figures. So they will override, the server will override your local setting. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, I've switched the smoke off, changed it to um, false, saved it. Now we can go and do our mission. We'll just have to wait for the mission to pop up. I think it takes about 15 seconds or something. Clear the abandoned outpost. So if we look at the map, See, there's a, an outpost. Clearly, someone's taken it over, um, and we're going to parachute into this area. So, I'll first set our spawn point. Obviously, you wouldn't put it over the enemy position because you probably get shot out of the sky. Uh, wouldn't be really great. So, we're going to probably parachute in. Let's say somewhere over here, depending on the wind direction. I think I'm going to add a wind direction indicator so that you can choose when you choose your your spawn position that you can allow for the wind and the drift effect. Ten seconds.
parachute, as it says, will open at 130 meters. going to speed this up so that they get to me more quickly. I deliberately like moved as far over to the left as I could because I wanted to just get beyond this wire that's here and the fence. The AI, as you can see, they kind of just are distributed pretty pretty evenly and 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 fairly far apart because the um, the important thing is that they don't collide in midair because then they if you ever hit someone in midair given that you're traveling at you know terminal velocity at a certain point you probably going to either get killed or incapacitated all right so i think we all hand out Seventy-five meters. Front. AT soldier. Seventy-five meters. Front.
All cover! Moving! Cover me! Go! Contact! Rifleman! Okay, let's go! Okay, let's go! Okay, let's go! Well, that was pretty, pretty easy. It normally isn't that easy. So, as you can see, I placed a table with a laptop here. It doesn't have to be a laptop or it could be anything. And this is basically just to create a, a backward uh, point so that you can, um, or, or reversal point, so you can get back to your to your base uh, or move to another position. So in this case, um, I'm going to move the spawn point or the halo point back to the airfield. Allowing for the wind, obviously their buildings, you got to take those sort of things into account. If you've got AI, if you've got players, they're, they're going to be able to steer their way away from objects. Okay. The guys are all down. On the ground. You have a weather report add action that you can add. It's it's part of the script header. You can just copy it into the laptop or whatever you use to call these scripts. So if you look at the weather report, it tells you that this is a weather report for the Altus operational area. Clear skies, temperature low 30. High temperature 41 degrees, wind direction 224 degrees southwest, uh, wind speed 0 0.5, gusts 0 0.05. That just warns you that the um, if you get a high gust uh, level of 0 0.5 or above, then you have to expect that the wind direction and speed can be quite volatile, can fluctuate very really rapidly. So if you are jumping into a position the same thing applies with any halo script when you select a position to jump you're assuming that the wind isn't going to have a major impact on your on your direction or uh, or your landing but um, i've set it so that the depending on what you set in the in the editor if you set the you know the, the wind speed like really really high you can expect to have like serious problems trying to land because you're horizontal speed will be so high that you will obviously die if you come down too fast or you try if you don't manage to uh, reduce it. So the weather report is quite useful so it tells you the direction of the wind and the strength. So obviously the wind strength in this case or wind speed is 0 0.5 kilometers an hour so it's not really going to make a major difference even though in this case the, the, the are slight gusts. You can see that that each time I run this you can see this windsock which is barely functional over here because there's hardly any wind. Um, you can see it's changing direction again. So if I check it now, it says the wind direction is 123 degrees southeast and it's just changed again. Wind direction 3 degrees north, wind speed 0 0.3 kilometers per hour. So it's not going to make a big difference where you place your uh, spawn point. So in this case, I'm just going to do a, a quick halo and we'll just show you the smoke, smoke effect. Okay, so we're going to halo in. Ten seconds. Where's the lights on? Okay, so I'm going to open my 
my parachute early. And you'll see the smoke effect. The, these are custom 12. particle effects I've written. Uh, the objective is to make sure that you don't get this sort of blubby effect that you would get if you were to attach a smoke grenade to the to uh, your foot or whatever. In this case, it's attached to the back of the training wing of the parachute. You could um, opt for a single canister or smoke to attach to your leg and you could have different colors. I'm just going to put him into a, a, a sharp turn and then bring up the camera and then you can see what it will look like from further down, like on the ground. So you could actually potentially use this to I'll switch on uh, accelerate time. But you could potentially use this to to do skywriting. And you see that the the lifetime of the particles is reasonably good, and the relative spread of the smoke is quite realistic. I think I'll get back into the into the driver's seat. And the frame rate's actually not really being damaged too much. I mean, I'm still running it over 60 frames per second whilst recording this at um, 2K, so it's not too bad. When you land, the uh, smoke is detached and destroyed, and it all kind of falls to the ground. Right, so I'm going to just do one last little example. If I put smoke on all of the units, just to show you what, what it looks like. Quick word about the fact that AI are using non-steerable parachutes. So if there was no wind, essentially they would be drifting down a uh, very consistent falling rate and the smoke would tend to trail up directly behind them and above them. So to, to create the sense that they're moving uh, horizontally, I push the wind up to uh, about, I don't know, about over five kilometers an hour. So it'll give a trail, create a trail of smoke behind them, um, which should make it look a little bit better. Obviously, if there was just players, we would, you know, you, you fly the, the chute properly with WASD, steer it, increase, the accelerate the velocity horizontally, and so you get a really good effect. Um, so if I look at the weather report, Currently, the wind speed is 7 kilometers an hour at northerly direction with zero gusts. So that should do the job. Ten seconds. So once the parachute's open, then the smoke appears. You can see the smoke effects below me, and as I said, because it's uh, non-steerable parachutes, the the AI don't sort of constantly spiral out of control, which is which is really cool. Um, they almost look like players. You see, because we're running 15, uh, there's a lot of a lot of particle effects here. It's taking approximately 10 to 10 to 15 frames off my normal FPS. Um, so the trails on the AI are slightly shorter than they would be if there were less less people. You can see that the trail on mine, and also because I'm increasing velocity, the uh, the effect is. A, is reasonably good. As soon as you touch down, your kit's obviously returned and the smoke is detached and it then goes into uh, or gets deleted.
content and are new to this channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you can get notified when we release new content. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.